love it. It is so cute. Hey, 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 Periscope. Hey, Facebook Live. I'm blocking you guys for a minute. I got to do something on this screen. All right. Hey guys, hey Candace. So hey, hey Facebook, hey Periscope. This is Ronald and Rachel. We are married by God and we are jumping on the scope late on today we tried to get on here at eight but of course life happened as we got the kids situated so we are um giving time for our viewers to jump on and join us if you are on facebook or periscope go ahead and share it with your followers for us invite people to come check the scope out we are going to have a very interesting topic on tonight a very yes. in demand topic on tonight and actually um it totally switched what we were going to do and mbg hubby brought it um to me um for us to do as a topic and there's so many people that want to talk about it so many times we talk about it um in coaching different couples and so it's such a topic in marriage marriages that we see um and we're talking tonight about sex and intimacy so mm. if you are joining us on tonight and this is your first time seeing us we are rachel and ronald harris we are marriage coaches in atlanta georgia and we are all about building up the kingdom of marriage under god's principles that's what mbg is all about and so we try to give you practical ways to live marriage at its best to enjoy all of the wonderfulness that is marriage all the blessings that is marriage to do this thing the right way that's what we're all about and so if you're on here um get ready for a hot 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 night we want you guys to engage with us so feel free to comment as we look at the comments we look at the questions we try to incorporate that in everything that we do on here um with mbg and so if you're on periscope keep the hearts coming for us that keeps us motivated invite people to come and check it out if you're on facebook live keep the thumbs up hearts faces whatever you got coming for us as well as it keeps us <clears throat> motivated as well and so as we let people jump on the scope as we let people jump on the scope and on Facebook Live, we just want to give you a heads up. We have our marriage conference. This is the second year coming up in Atlanta, Georgia in August. Um, we don't have the exact date yet, but I will keep you guys posted. I always like to talk about it on the scope just to give you a heads up, but we will have that information coming to you soon. The conference is entitled Think It Strong. It's all mm. about the power of your thoughts, about taking your thoughts and maximizing your marriage, transforming your marriage or your relationship from the thoughts that you have about it it's going to be an awesome awesome conference and so just be on the lookout for that also we have a couple other things coming up that we'll let you know about but we're going to go ahead and start the scope because we got on a little late and we want to make sure that we get to discuss all this goodness that we got for you guys tonight on um mbg and we can um get any questions or comments that you guys have and so also keep in mind if you have any questions or comments that you would like to uh have us have us answer mm -hmm. or any concern that you may have or maybe you just may be going through something in your marriage or in your relationship feel free yeah to shoot us that um question in the message box yeah and so for you guys who are on the scope and on facebook with us um we are talking sex and marriage um we are talking affection intimacy affection slash intimacy in marriage and as many people know men and women we need very different things we both enjoy some of the things we're going to be talking about but the need for things is very different on our scale of things needed in our lives and needed in our marriage yeah. and a lot of times we're finding that marriages are struggling out here and marriages are having a hard time with these very two things that they need to thrive and a lot of them are missing the very 
two things that they need to thrive and have a successful marriage. And so we want to talk about what's going on with marriage. How can we get back to making sure these things are continually flowing in our marriage and our relationships? And how can we ensure that we're protecting our marriages from being tempted on the outside, um, tempted from the outside to step outside of our marriage and our relationship? That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We're talking about how do you handle um, not getting sex in your marriage? How do you handle not mm-hmm. getting intimacy or affection in your marriage and how can you turn that thing around and keep you know you also have to keep in mind that you know no one is perfect mm-hmm. and things happen life happen like we're supposed to get on here at eight o'clock but we end up getting on here at eight thirty. yeah our intention was to get on here at eight o'clock yeah but we end up getting on here at eight thirty. so just keep in mind that uh things do happen yeah and yeah. so tonight is going to be a hot topic we're going to be talking about sex let's talk about sex me. Let's not just talk about it. Let's do it. Uh, I feel like I want to bust out with a salt and pepper dance. I thought you were going to say you want to do it. But, um, <laughs> yes, we are going to be Already. talking about tonight's sex and intimacy. Yes. And I'm just going to throw a little shout out here just to, throw, uh, just to get the guys kind of up and rolling mm-hmm. and getting a good understanding of what this show is going to be about tonight. Guys, you must, first thing first, we must understand that sex and intimacy are two different things. When totally a woman says she wants intimacy, that doesn't mean she wants sex. Mm. So a lot of times we confuse the two, mm-hmm. especially, you know, men are from Venus and women are from Mars. And so we have a different view of seeing things and hearing things. Mm-hmm. You could tell us, you know, you want intimacy in the first thing come to our mind is what sex yeah and so we're going to first clear that up that sex i mean intimacy does not mean sex yes but sex can cause intimacy to happen and intimacy can lead to sex so they are connected Keep but they're not mind, the same thing women are confusing <laughs> you know they say they want intimacy <sighs> and you know when you're giving your and you know everybody have different meaning of intimacy. Mm -hmm. You know, one would say, you know, sitting here next to your significant other watching a movie. Mm -hmm. That's an intimate moment Mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. Uh, Laying in the bed next to her, just holding her Mm -hmm. is another intimate moment for her. Mm -hmm. Uh, Holding hands, walking through the park, or holding hands, walking through the mall Mm -hmm. is an intimate moment for your spouse. Okay. And I like to tell men this. The, 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 the main, I'm going to list a few key things that you must understand and that you must know about your significant other. One, you must know her. Mm. Two, you must understand her. Mm-hmm. And three, you must love her. Mm-hmm. So you got understanding, you mm-hmm. got knowing, and you got love. Mm-hmm. Understanding, knowing, and love. Mm-hmm. When you understand her, you know uh, what moves her. Mm-hmm. You know what you know, triggers her, what yeah. turns her on, what yeah. turns her off, yeah. what, you know, make her uh, go over the cliff. Yeah. That's understanding her. Yeah. Now, to know her, and this is one of the questions that I throw to some guys earlier today. He was saying that he was having some issue with his wife. Now, I asked him, do you know your wife? He mm-hmm. said, yeah, I know my wife. I said, so tell me what day is her cycle. Mm -hmm. What day does her cycle come on Mm -hmm. and what day does it go off? Is Mm -hmm. it at the beginning of the month, middle of the month, end of the month? Mm -hmm. Well, he was like, well, I mean, that's some, that's woman stuff. She should know. Mm -hmm. I mean, she knows that. Mm -hmm. When she tell me, I said, no. Mm -hmm. These are things that you must know Mm -hmm. about your wife. You Mm -hmm. should know when her cycle come on. You Mm -hmm. should know when it goes off. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of guys don't know that the cycle shifts, Mm -hmm. you know, throughout the Mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first quarter of the month, I mean, of the year, it could be Coming on between the first and the third. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mid season of the year, it can come on between the 14th and the 17th. Mm-hmm. And around the end of the year, it could come on between the 30th, I mean the 27th or the 30th. Mm-hmm. These are key points. These are key things that you must know. Mm-hmm. And I know. Why some, must you know that? Very good question, my student. <laughs> and a lot of people, and that's what that was his next question. Mm-hmm. Why should I know that? Mm-hmm. Because when you know things like that, you know how to deal with your wife. Yeah. If she had a highly emotional state of mind, you know that you got to shower her more with that love. You got to shower yeah. her more with that affection. You yeah. got to give her more of that intimacy Absolutely. that she yearns for when she's going through uh, what we would call Mother Nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. That time of Mother Nature is hitting home. Absolutely. And so that's the reason for knowing that. Mm-hmm. That's why you must know. Mm-hmm. And to love. Mm-hmm. To love. Even the Bible talks about us loving our wife as Christ loved the church. And we're mm-hmm. going to delve into that a little later so we can get a better understanding of that. Because I know that kind of get a little confusion, confused. Yeah. 
people get a little confused with understanding what does that really mean to love my wife as Christ loved the church. So that's just a little intro you, about yeah, what way we're going to be going with that. Yeah. And so three things, men, you must know your wife. Mm -hmm. Two, you must understand your wife. And three, you must love your wife. Yeah. You must know. I mean, knowing down to the point when her cycle come on, when it go off. That's going to give you a key. That's going to be a key point because mm -hmm. then you know how to deal with this emotional creature that mm -hmm. God has placed in your life. Matter of yeah. fact, he didn't even place it. You asked for her. Yeah, yeah. You went to the altar with her. Yeah. And so there's going to be some key points that you're going to need to know. Yeah. Going through this segment right here. Yeah. So I'm going to let my wife, I just want to give you guys a, uh, you know, a quick introduction from a male perspective <laughs> on what to look for because today I'm going to be targeting the man mm -hmm. you know challenging the men mm -hmm. to know do you really know your wife yeah. do you really understand your wife and truly do you really love your wife yeah. to love your wife simply means to sacrifice that is how we measure love mm -hmm. is through the sacrifices that you're willing to make mm -hmm. for your significant other absolutely absolutely and so I guess we'll jump in and get started we're going to start with Sex or intimacy? Let's start with sex. Let's start with sex. How many times a week should a man get sex? You know what? That's a great question to pose you guys on. So, 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 so Facebook family and Periscope, let's just comment. How many times do you think it's reasonable for a married couple to be intimate, to have sex? I'm going to say not intimate. To, I'm going to say to have sex. To have sex. What's reasonable to have sex? What would be the actual time, actual time that you feel like that's a healthy marriage um, having sex and I need you guys to comment. So what do you think? What twice a week, <laughs> five times a week, and so look, once a week, three there you go, three days a week. Great. Okay, we got three, three days. days a week on Periscope. Come on, we need Come on more. Facebook, we need, we need you okay, comment. Look, and, and Somebody what? else said three three times a week. Seven times two or three <laughs> What? Candace, seven. what is that? So six? that's like that's like that's like fourteen or twenty one. <laughs> but wait a minute, we got six out of seven days. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is getting interesting. So, what you want, for those of you who are just joining in, yes. the, the question that we just posed, how many times yeah. a week or yeah. how many times a month yeah. should you and your wife have sex? We're talking about a week. Yeah. How many times a week? A week. A week. How a week. many times a week. a week? Out of a week, yeah. how many times should... Reason depending if I'm a trophy wife or a worker. <laughs> <laughs> no, reasonable does not mean that does not depend on whether you're a trophy wife or a working wife. Reasonable is reasonable. It's no, what mean, do you think? How often do you think that you all should be having sex? Because sex is a beautiful and okay, wonderful thing six. under the establishment of marriage. So sex, you're supposed to be having sex in marriage, guys. Don't get it twisted. So many times we get married and we get holier than down. We forget that this is something that God gave us in the arena of marriage to enjoy each other and to have a very good time. And so I'm seeing six come across here quite often from the same person. But so I'm going to stress that, uh, that uh, six is what it looks like the men are trying to say. And I see women around two or three, somewhere around that ballpark is appropriate. I'm going to say, uh, I'd probably say maybe even two or, two or three times a week, maybe more just depending on how the week going um, with mm -hmm. you balancing life. So I really don't know how often, um, how, uh, somebody said four on um, Periscope. <laughs> Absolutely. And so it, as we see, it could vary from marriage to marriage, but reasonable, reasonably, it seems like, like you should be having sex every week. Every week. At minimum, every you week. should be connecting every week that it doesn't include a, a Mother Nature week and she's not connected to it. So you should be having sex with your spouse at least weekly. Great. Now we're at that point. So we have found happened six times <laughs> so somebody asked what quality of sex happens six times a week absolutely i mean I, I, that's a great question okay, because what's really going on if we're connecting like that sexually six times a week is it just to get it off is it actually to enjoy each other and connect on a deeper level is it just to have a quickie is it just for the release of stress what are what is it really getting and who is it really moving that's a wonderful question because yeah. i think it varies from encounter to encounter i think and that's the problem that people have in understanding this piece in marriage because w at one point that week your desire as the male or the female can be getting met 
at the next occasion, it could simply be for the for the other spouse and you really didn't enjoy it the way you enjoyed the last time. Okay. And so it may shift and change. But I think the the thing that we have to address is the desire, the desire for a husband to be with his wife and the desire for a wife to be with her husband. Mm -hmm. So many times we are seeing people completely shut down sex in their marriage or in or we talk about marriage in their marriage and it is a very dangerous place to go. We see people um, cutting sex out for months at a time. That's a very dangerous place to go. And that's not natural for a marriage. We got to understand it, guys. It's not a natural thing for a marriage, for a husband and wife not to connect sexually as often as possible. And we're going to talk about the scriptural piece of that, but it's just yeah. it's just not natural to do. And that's where you get the temptation come in. That's where you get people feeling like they're deprived, feeling like they're not getting what they signed up for. They're not getting what they need out of the marriage or the relationship and you want to keep your spouse desiring you you want to keep that going yeah. because if you don't you get in a very um dangerous place okay and and one of the other things that i want to share with you guys for all the men who are on this scope and on the facebook live uh we kind of sparked this up because i am starting a all uh male group um called the village of men <laughs> and so this kind of you know i got with a few guys this this uh, this this evening, and this is one of the conversation that came up mm -hmm. because one of the guys who I'm starting the group with his crazy. The question <laughs> was, um, what, what did I say? The question was, the question was, he's he's married, mm -hmm. and he's having to. Oh, feeling like he's begging. He feeling like he's begging his wife. Mm -hmm for sex. And so that's kind of sparked the question. Yeah. And because this is a very... So let uh, me ask this before you go into that. Okay, go ahead. Should men, should you beg for sex and women, should your husband have to beg for sex? Let's have a real talk. Should your spouse have to beg for sex? And it could be whether you're the man or the woman, should you beg for sex? Go ahead, baby, because I know you were talking about... No, no, go ahead. I mean, we just want to hear some input. Should you have to beg for sex? For sex? Me, I don't think you should have to beg for sex. But one thing you got to keep in mind... That women, we always say this, women are emotional creatures, so you have to have, uh, have to know how to go about it. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of time, men, we just think that it should just happen. And I always use this as an analogy. Women are like uh, a 77 Chevelle yes. with an old carburetor. Sometimes you have to pack the gas to get the fuel up to the carburetor for them mm -hmm. to get started. Mm -hmm. uh, most men are like the 2017 Camaro. We mm -hmm. turn the engine over and it will start automatically. <laughs> And so <laughs> Candace said, I mean, what does he deem begging for sex? Okay, so typically what we find um is that and maybe maybe you want to explain it, babe, for what men, because I don't because I think one thing about women is we we see begging for sex is like really, really begging. And that's not what no, men no, talk about no, when no, they we, say begging. No, we don't say begging as like, oh please, please. No, not that type mm -hmm. of begging. But if I come to you and you know I'm trying to start something, you like, you know, my head hurt or you know, my <laughs> back hurt. hurt. You know, the bottom of my foot been hurting all day. And then you turn over and you go to sleep. And you're like, so the next day comes, you're like, hey, man, you know, what's up? And it's like, um, I'm tired. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I had to go deal with the kids all day at day school. Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, I understand that. Then you come the next day and you're mm -hmm. like, hey, uh, you know, what's up now? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, uh, yeah, um... I'm just stressed out. Mm -hmm. And so that's begging, what mm -hmm. we consider as begging. If I had to keep coming to you mm. over and over and over again, you keep giving me the same excuses, mm -hmm. to us, it's rejection. Mm. So it's one of two things. Either you are being intimate with someone else or you just don't want to have the intimacy time with your partner. No, let's not call it intimacy because we're talking about intimacy Well, not intimacy. Well, you just don't want to give it up. <laughs> And that very well may be the case. And so typically what we find is people struggle on, first of all, talking about sex in their marriage and their relationship. A lot of people just don't talk about it. A lot of people, like Ronald said, if something is going on and, um, Life happens. So you have a headache one day, then this happened, then this happened. It still comes down to communication. And there are situations that things happen, and there are situations that we truly withhold sex from our spouse. Those are two very different things. The danger comes in the situations where we knowingly, willingly, intentionally withhold sex from our mate. 
Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest problems. Yeah. And so we look at it as begging if you keep coming up, like someone said, you keep coming up with excuses about, you know, why you don't want to give it up. Why? Somebody said exactly straight rejection, so I'll just go to work and get money. No! We don't want you but guys to just look. go to work but, and, and, and And the reason why, and this typically happens to most men, because the, to mm -hmm. stop from going out cheating, mm -hmm. or to stop from being angry at you, or to stop from having problems or issues in the house, mm -hmm. I'd rather just go to clear my mind somewhere else. Whether mm -hmm. it be going out working, mm -hmm. whether it's going out to the gun range, mm -hmm. whether it's going out hanging with the boys, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. If I have to do that, to stop from bringing an issue into the house about the sex, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm just going to leave and do that. Okay. Which, that sometimes may not be the right thing. Mm -hmm. It's better to face the giant mm -hmm. than to leave the giant standing. Mm -hmm. Because eventually, at some point, you're yeah. going to have to deal with that issue. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it's important to understand that sex is a need for a man or a woman in marriage. we got to understand, across the board, sex is, sex is a need for both the man and the woman. But we got to understand that it's more of a need typically for men. What you find, you do have those rare women that like to get it on more than their husbands do. That does happen to have a ha higher sex drive. But typically, men are more driven sexually than women. That's because they're more physically, physically, they're more physically yeah. turned on than women are. We get we get turned on by a different route. Yes, we see a guy, he's attractive, that's great. Our husband, he's looking good, that's great. But that's not all we need to get turned on, especially when you got all these other things floating around you that you got to handle. Women need to be need to receive affection and intimacy to get aroused. Men just need to see their wife who they attracted to to be like, okay, babe, it's going down today. Now, on the flip side of that, mm -hmm. women need to be more uh, like the side chick. Mm -hmm. Mean to be like, no, I don't, I don't want to talk tonight. Uh -huh. I don't want to rub you down. I don't yeah. want to give you sweet nothing. Yeah. What I need for you to do is pull that. <laughs> Pull that to the side, pull that roll to the side, and, you know, let's get to it. And let's talk about it, because you just brought up something that has blown up so much over the years, this whole glorification of a side chick, this whole conversation yeah. of side chicks. And it was back in the day, too, they used to call, whether you call them the other woman, the side chick, the yeah. mistress, it doesn't matter what title you put on it, it's somebody else that is sexually gratifying your spouse outside of the marriage covenant. That thing is very real, and what's happening now, so many people are are attaching themselves to side pieces simply for the sexual connection because people are cutting off their spouse from sex. That's very dangerous. For, for my people on here that understand the word of God, it says do not abstain from one another. Do not keep sex from one another unless yes. you have agreed one. You have a, you're in agreement. So even if you want to do it for yourself, even if you want to fast for yourself and say, hey, if I say, hey, Ron, I'm fasting tomorrow and he doesn't agree, I just can't you go can't and fast, fast and be no. like, hey, you ain't getting nothing. I said I'm fasting. That's not how how it works so we have to be in agreement to abstain from sex in order to fast and pray and it says only for a short while so it doesn't say we're going to be doing this for three months because we don't want to come back and be tempted God yeah. knows our flesh guys he knows that um, we can all easily be tempted when we are deprived of a need. We got to understand needs and see this. A lot of times people want to minimize needs in marriage. Sex is a need in marriage. Intimacy and intimacy and affection is a need in marriage. That's why we wanted to talk about it tonight because so many times it gets minimized. It's like, okay, you don't really need that. I give it to you when I give it to you. It does not work that way. It is a need. It and because, need. and let me explain this to you guys. So when we talk about sex and understanding that you just can't cut off sex in a marriage you got to understand <laughs> it this way you're used to getting water i think we said this before out of your house mm -hmm. water is something that our, all of our bodies need water liquid we need it to survive it is a need that feeds our body you're used to getting it at your house you, it's great soon you're not able to get water at your house no more. You try everything to get it to uh, give you this water that you've been used to getting at your house, but it's dried up. It's not there. The resource is no longer available. Understand, lady, ladies and gentlemen, just because the resource is not available does not mean the need no longer exists. Just because... <laughs> 
the resource is not available does not mean the need no longer exists. We are still very thirsty, very dehydrated and deprived of water. And typically what people do when a resource no longer is able to give them what they got from that resource, they go find another resource that supplies that same need, that fulfills that same need. That's true in business. That's true mm -hmm. in relationships. That's true in anything that you want to look at. Because if I want to have a successful business and I'm used to partnering this person and they give me the resources that I need to make, to make my business productive and they no longer can give me that, I'm going to go somewhere where I can get my resource need met. Yeah. You got to understand that it works the same for marriage and relationship. It, now, I'm not condoning. No one's stepping out. But I want us to have some real conversations on how people do step out. And I'm not talking about the people that step out because they just greedy. They cheaters anyway. Some people just come into a marriage and a relationship as cheaters. Cheating. Like they're going to cheat no matter who they married to. But there are some people that truly are pushed. I'm going to say it because y'all don't want to talk about it for real. Yeah. There are some people that are pushed outside of their marriage and their relationship because we don't want to take ownership of really giving our spouse what we know they need need it and anytime somebody is out here deprived of something they're go oh they're gonna go look for something and we gotta understand that but then we want to get mad when tony end up with kate and we like wait a minute because the, the thing you got to realize that's why i say women have to learn and then this it go both ways mm -hmm. i'm not just gonna just shoot mm -hmm. down women but i think it go both mm -hmm. ways i know that it go both ways so it's like we have to be versatile in our marriage. That's the only mm -hmm. way your marriage is going to be successful. It's okay to be conservative sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's you have to get down and dirty sometimes too. Mm -hmm. And likewise with men, it's okay to you to want to have it and get it every day. But sometimes you have to also give her that intimacy. Just like men want sex mm -hmm. and their sex drive is high, women intimacy level is also extremely mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. And so if she's not getting that intimacy, she's going to have the ability to also... Search yes. for that on the outside as well. Mm -hmm. Just like when you're not getting that sex in the inside, you're going to have the ability. We may not try to go out and do it, mm -hmm. but you can find yourself in that place. Yep. Uh, Miles Monroe once said, you know, a car need gas. Yep. It just don't want gas. It yeah. needs it gas. Needs gas. So if I pull up and I'm on E and yeah. I go to the gas station and they say they're out of premium octane, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the next gas station. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I need gas to run. Mm -hmm. If you don't put gas in your car, your car will not function well. Now, check it out. The gas is not for you. You don't drink gas. You don't like gas. You don't need gas to function. The gas is for the car that you need to do what it needs to, to do. do. That's the same thing when you look at depriving someone of sex or depriving someone of intimacy. affection or yeah. intimacy. You, as a man, may not need intimacy, but your wife needs it. And so you have to fuel her with intimacy. You, as a wife, you may not be desiring or needing sex at mm -hmm. the time but you need to fuel your husband with some sex it works the same way and we gotta stop holding these um things that eat our knees over each other's head dangling it like if you don't do this for me i'm not gonna do this for you so we everybody's just sitting there starving and waiting on the first person who's gonna step out and well, look to be fed well i think if people would just be honest if we're gonna have a prostitute marriage let's do that there you so go. every time i want some there you i don't go. mind cutting the check if this is going to be mine mm. and we have a you know we have an agreement that say hey mm. if hit, that's how you want to set it up that's how i'm gonna and say that's it. not the way it's supposed to I'm be i'm not saying no i'm not condoning it yeah so but, that's, I don't but wanna... so many people do that because that is Secrecy. what's happening yeah. so it's like now we gotta have this whole trade-off to get our needs met yeah and that's crazy but also keep in mind this Everything in life is give and take. Yeah. You so it's balance in everything. Yeah. In everything in life. Yeah. You know, even down to your friendship, even down to your 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 family ship that you have with your your cousin and nieces yes. and nephews or whoever it may be, it's all gonna require some balance. Absolutely. It's gonna require some balance. Yeah. Absolutely. But okay, so Understand, guys, for those who just jumping on the scope, we're on here tonight talking about marriage and um, intimacy slash affection in marriage. We're talking about sex in marriage. <laughs> I just said marriage. We're talking about sex and intimacy in marriage. We're talking about the need for it, the desire for it, why people aren't having it. Do you guys know that the church now has like a 50% divorce rate? 
I mean, we, we compete in like with the world. And why is it that we are having such a high divorce rate compared to the world? If we're supposed to be getting taught the principles of marriage and taught the principles of God, why are we struggling just the same? And we like to think that people aren't really talking about these things in churches. I know a lot of churches we've been a part of, they're not talking about the things that people truly are experiencing. A lot of the questions that we get behind the scenes, they're not talking about in church. They're not talking about how to deal with this. They're not talking about how to have an honest conversation. Me and my husband always say, we made this pact before we got married. We said that if it ever came to a point where either one of us felt like we wanted to step out, like we were there at stepping out, that we would sit the other person down, have a very clear conversation to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm feeling not. like this. This is what's going on. We haven't been together. I'm not getting this from you. I haven't got this from you in a month, mm -hmm. two months, three months, however long it's been. I am feeling like I'm getting pushed to where I want to get my needs met somewhere else. We made that very clear that that's a conversation we got to be able to have. And so many people in marriage do not know how to have those kind of conversations because to have that kind of conversation, you got to be friends. You got to be able to take the hardness, the hard conversations. Mm -hmm. Those are hard conversations because when your spouse comes to you and say they feel like cheating, before you get mad and get in your emotions, you got to step back and listen to what is pushing your spouse on the outside. That's what a mature person will do. And that's who somebody, that's what somebody will do who wants to um, continue and wants to prevent infidelity in their marriage or their relationship. But a lot of times people can't have them, those kind of conversations because emotion starts starts to fly. Somebody starts either cursing, going off, yelling, shouting. I don't want to talk about this. You so selfish. It's always about you. Anytime you throw out stuff like that, when your spouse brings a issue to you, especially about sex or intimacy, when you shut down the conversations about it's always about you, you always want this. I feel like it just, I'm just a piece of me. And I've been there. I've done that. Trust. I'm not saying this because I ain't lived it. I've done it. And I had to be checked about it, you know, through my relationship with God and through conversations with my husband. Because at the root of it, how can I say I want a committed, faithful man? I want my husband to just desire me, but then I want to kill his desire when I don't want to give it to him. Because that's what, you, that's what, in essence, we do when we reject, 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 reject. You kill the desire. You kill the desire. Because men only going to take so much rejection before they say, you know what, all right. They're not even checking for you no more. Mm -hmm. And when your husband stops checking for you, he going to soon start checking for somebody else. And when your husband starts checking for somebody else, it may not happen immediately that he steps out or she steps out. It's going to be at some point that they feel justified because understand most people that step out and cheat when they're deprived in their marriage, they feel justified. Yes. You yes. got to understand that. They don't go out and just cheat just to be mean or they don't cheat just to get back at you. No, most people step do. out because they justify the infidelity mm -hmm. in their mind before they actually went and committed the act. That's how it goes. And so you always got to be willing to communicate and have the tough conversations about sex really okay so we got a few questions i was just reading through okay. some of the questions i think one of the question is uh, they, uh somebody was saying can the men handle the tough conversation oh. can the men handle the com tough conversation that's what we need to get to the root of because we say we can handle the conversation okay. but can you really handle it? Can you really handle it? Men who are on the, on the scope or on Facebook Live, can you handle the tough conversations? And I and, and, and see, that's the thing. Because and I got think, more questions soon. I think so many people struggle with the th tough conversations. And the thing about it, guys, you're not going to be able to handle tough conversations if you're not conversating already. So first, you have to be able to communicate. Because I think... Yeah. Um, how you say things, if you're tactful about saying anything, I yeah. think you can get cross to the other person. Yep. But if you guys are already struggling with communication, yep. there's no way that the male or the female are going to be able to handle that conversation. Mm -hmm. And so first we got to have a good understanding of how to communicate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not just, you know, just going off the hinges, uh, just always screaming and yelling emotionally yeah but really sit down and say look man yes, this I can. that's what i respect mm -hmm. so you got so you got some guys on periscope saying yes i can that's what i respect i respect the, the tough conversations because yeah. we got to be able to have the tough conversations like you got to be able to have them yeah. conversations like as a husband if i come to you and i say look babe um i know last night you thought 
you had really kind of put it down, but it just it, it just wasn't enjoyable for me. <laughs> like, really, if I'm going to be honest, the last three weeks just ain't really been good. I mean, we got to really change some things. Now, if you're the type of husband <laughs> that's going to get all in your feelings yeah. and get upset, and feel like now I'm coming at your manhood and feel like now you got to step outside and feel like you the man again. Somebody else going to enjoy it to validate your sex. Then that's going to be a problem. But if yep. you're the type of husband that's going to be like, okay, babe, you know what? I really did. I really did. Thought I put it down, baby. Tell me, tell me what, 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 what was wrong? What did you need more of? What did you, yeah. What did you need more of? Was it what, what wasn't pleasing to you? That's what marriage is about, guys. And it's, and it's vice versa. Mm -hmm. Now, if the woman, if 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 the man come to mm -hmm. you on the on the other side and say, "Hey, babe, you know what? You ain't really been putting it down." And you know what the Bible said? Mm -hmm. The Bible said is 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 life and death and the power of the tongue. Yeah. And <laughs> You can give them life and you can kill them. You so extra. You can give them life or you can kill the person. You know, but this this is not something I'm making up. Mm -hmm. This is in the Bible. It mm -hmm. said there's this life and death in mm -hmm. the power mm -hmm. of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And I'm so just, I came with you. Ladies, if your husband comes to you, give him some power. Give, give him some power. Give him some life. <laughs> give him some life. Because I think most men, you know, because there's no excuses about, you know, your head is hurting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to move your head. <laughs> My back is hurting. Mm -hmm. you, we don't need your back. So, <laughs> but, oh my and so God. these are some things that, no, but you know, we're talking about this stuff yeah, because this is real. thing that, you know, the church ain't going to tell you, mm -hmm. but we are here mm -hmm. to, to let you know mm -hmm. the real. And because the thing is, like, we, we were talking to another couple, uh, we was at the radio station, and we found out that, hey, we don't talk about it, mm -hmm. but now... Now we're going to go biblically on it now. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to the Bible on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to Genesis. Mm -hmm. You know, when you know when God created the being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't have on clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They didn't have on clothes back in Genesis. Yeah. No, it wasn't no clothes. Mm -hmm. Before the sin, it was no clothes yep. at all. So your after. room should be like Genesis 1. <laughs> When you go to your room, you, you should, should be naked and unashamed. Naked and unashamed. Naked and unashamed. That, that's mentally, physically, uh, and sexually. Say that, babe, because I think one thing that blocks the sexual connection a lot of time for people as, as, is that we are so mentally heavy that yeah. we can't get in a place of en sexual enjoyment. We can't. Because we got the cares of the world on our shoulders and we taking it to the bedroom. We like, here, babe, let me dump all this on mm -hmm. you today. And he trying to get some or she trying to relax from a stressful day at work. She just want to be, you know, intimate and have some sex with her husband. And you like, hold on, baby, I had a rough day. These dudes and got on my nerves. Look, right. all that need to stay on the outside, guys. We got to be able to shut down some of this stuff that we bring into the bedroom that derails us from connecting with each other sexually. And, and let me say this. Most of the time when men are having stress with his work, one of the main things, I know a lot of people ain't like this, but he need to release. You always say that. That's so the truth. That, that is stress. That's he needs to release. Mm -hmm. He need to let that blood flow. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is if you, ladies, I, I'm, look, I'm going to give y'all the key. Mm. This is key. going to be the key. When you see your husband is stressed, if you can do this sacrificial offering, Take off your clothes, give him some right there at the point of attack. Sacrifice. That will change simply everything. Mm. I'm telling you, it would change it would everything. It would just shift when, the atmosphere. When your husband, you know, he had a point where he wanted to argue or something ain't going right, just take off your clothes. Just start, don't even say nothing. Just take off your clothes and see the reaction that you get. Mm. In the mix of an argument, mm -hmm. I want to challenge each woman on this scope mm. in the mix of an argument right before it get heated and started. Take your clothes off mm. and see the reaction. I'm telling you, it will kill everything. It's gonna kill the argument. It's gonna kill. It's gonna argument. kill the argument. It's gonna kill the argument because majority of people who marry, and I say majority because there's some people they get married for. I don't even know why they get married, but majority of people that get married are attracted to each other. So they have a desire, a desire for each other. And so typically men have a real desire for their wives. So anytime, even when we don't feel 100% secure about our physical uh, nature at that time, men are like, babe, you hot. I mean, I don't know what you say. I know. I mean, I support you. You want to lose weight, but you're fine yeah. to me. That's, that's how men are. And so typically they're always attracted <laughs> to their wives. Yeah. And so like Ronald said, if you do that, it will shut an argument down. Now that's a hard thing to do because we want to we want to argue. We want it, and most of the time, women want to win. Yeah. Oh yeah. Women want to win. Yeah. And this is the way you win. Yeah. 
I'm giving you the key to how to mm -hmm. win. This is how you win. You want to win men over giving sex. And I'm not saying that's going to be the whole gist of your marriage. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah. But this is the key point where a lot of people like to miss out. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say, hey, just pray about it. Dude, I can't pray. Mm. I got mm. pressure. I need to release this pressure. Mm. Then, and I know, so, you know, if we got pastors on the line, they go, no, that ain't the right thing mm. to do. No, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. He know, the pastor know, mm -hmm. I know, mm -hmm. and most men know, mm -hmm. this is this is what God created this for pleasure. Mm -hmm. He did. And mm -hmm. see, people don't like, I'm going to go all the way back to Genesis mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it was, it was, it was the point where, uh, Noah, mm -hmm. when God told Noah, said, Hey man, I'm finna cause a storm to hit, you know, hit this town. I'm finna wipe everything away. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he put male and female of every animal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every being, mm -hmm. Noah, his wife? Mm -hmm. This is the reason why, because it was for, uh, pleasure and procreation. Hey, so if you on Periscope and the connection keeps kicking you off, you can catch us on Facebook live on the Married by God page. It seems to be up and running fine. So if you want to jump on there and catch us, we're on live on um, Facebook too. So yeah, you I can jump put you out. Because I know I see it coming in and out, guys. I'm sorry on Periscope. I don't know why my connection on Periscope was yeah, giving me a hard you. time. But um, so if you're on here and you're having trouble, feel free to join us on Facebook. But yeah, baby, that's so true. Um, what you said, because people got to, God created this whole sex and marriage for sex for a well, couple of reasons. Yes, for a couple and of reasons. enjoyment, like you said, is definitely one of the things. Why so many marriages are not having sex is because there is no enjoyment. Nobody wants to participate in an activity that they feel like they're not getting any pleasure about. But the problem is nobody's talking about <laughs> the way to get the pleasure back into the sex. Nobody wants to talk about how to have an enjoying sex life as a married couple. Nobody's having those kind of conversations. Yeah. And, so, and even... Even, no, no one is talking about, even I see a lot of people saying about the sacrificial, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that is how you measure love mm -hmm. through your sacrifice. Absolutely. So when I say sacrificial mm -hmm. offering mm -hmm. is sexual intercourse, but it's like, even when you don't want to do it, Absolutely. you sacrifice, Absolutely. you give your body to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And for most men, women, I know you're not going to like this, <laughs> yeah. but for most men, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it don't take much. Yeah. You tell me, man, I really don't feel like doing it. You want a minute? I got you in a minute. <laughs> you want 30 seconds? I can make it happen in 30 seconds. It's like Burger King. You can have it your way. I don't need much time. This man said it's no. like Burger King. No, I'm, this is real talk. No, and but that is real because, because at, that I point, understand. Men, the, at that point, men just want to get what they want to get. That's it. And, 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 and I know a lot of women like to say, well, that's just selfish. Uh-huh. It is selfish to a degree. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Truly, it is selfish to a degree. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, this is what your husband needs. Yeah. Yeah. This is what your husband and needs. And I say it's selfish to a degree because when we begin to talk about intimacy and affection, <laughs> which most men don't care nothing about, it's, it, it, it's, it's selfish for women. And it's like, look, dude, I don't really want now. I just want to sit here next to you in this bed, you know what I'm saying, and just lay up under you. Now, number one, I'm going to throw this out there for the men. Mm -hmm. Intimacy is the <laughs> devil. I'm going to say that again. Intimacy it is, not. <laughs> is the devil. And I'm going to say this. Now, women, this is what you guys Oh, want. my God. You know that laying next to me, cuddle it all up, turns me on. Mm. And that's what you want to do for three days straight. You want somebody to spoon you yeah. for three days straight. So you're simply telling me you want to be up on me like this with no clothes on and no intercourse. That's what you want. So so somebody said uh, women need more than a minute, especially sexually evolved women over 30. Okay. Y'all need, you need sex more than a minute. You got to give it up. Yeah. First, you got to give it so up. So it's just if you don't want to give it up, I can give it to you in a minute. See, but that's the sacrificial part. I was talking when I was saying the thirty, the thirty seconds, or the minute, yeah. or the, the minute and a half. Yeah. That's just a sacrificial piece. When yeah. you don't really want to do it, okay, we can give you that. Okay. Now, if you want the thirty minutes, the forty minutes, it's just like running track. If you want me to run uh, the sixteen hundred, I got to run around the track a few times. I just can't not be working out. And then run a whole 1600. Yeah. No. Somebody said, I bet the different intimacy is not the devil. <laughs> huh? No, it's not. They said intimacy is not the devil. No, it's it not. It is. How do you want someone to lay up under you, cut up under you, hold you mm. 
for two days straight. <laughs> and go to sleep. And go to sleep. <laughs> and go to sleep. 95% of the men on this scope cannot sleep after three hours of intimacy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And what but what I'm saying is what you and it go back to what I was just saying about the uh uh the training thing. Mm -hmm. Men, you have to train your body. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that it can't be done. Absolutely. Anything is possible, it can be done. I have not mastered it, mm -hmm. but I can do it. Mm -hmm. And so you have to train your body. And also, man, you have to come out of your selfishness as well. Mm -hmm. As just as she sacrificed for you, you also have to sacrifice for her. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean when I say you have to sacrifice for her? You have to go in it not expecting something every time Absolutely. you give her the intimacy. Absolutely. Now, when you go in it not expecting anything, 85% of the time you would come out on top with yep. a happy ending. Yep. But when you go in it expecting something and you don't get it, that's when you toss and turn all night. You want to get up and go out and just do something. But you also have to give, you know, her that sacrificial offering as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. if she need that night of just holding her, mm -hmm. give her that night. And so somebody said intimacy starts before the bedroom. Absolutely. And so I guess that's to say, like, if you talk about intimacy where sex will take place or just intimacy as a whole, intimacy does not need to be attached to a bed for women at all. Um, at all. If sex organ does not end in the organs for a man, is it a waste? Yes, so, it is. A, God, you didn't even let me get the question out. Waste. It is like taking a 12 gauge everybody shotgun. Everybody didn't see the question. It's so, like taking a 12 gauge wait, shotgun, cocking it back, and putting it to your head. <laughs> Boom. So Ronald answers the question. Okay, but go ahead. Is sex slash orgasm does not end in, if the sex does not end in an orgasm for a man is it a waste guys I don't know I'm not a guy Ronald said yes it's like yes. taking a shotgun putting it to your head um ah that analogy is so extreme coming from because my I want you to feel <laughs> I mean it's just like you working two weeks at your job doing 40 hours of overtime mm. and not getting paid mm. really yeah it is painful I'm done I'm done I'm done <laughs> But that, I'm, I'm, if you want how men think, so, if any man will disagree with me, post it. So that's great. So that's great that you opened that up because then why do you men think that women want to always have sex and not have an orgasm too? Why yep. do married men think that's okay? Because if you just said it feel like going to work for 40 hours and not getting a check, it feel like putting a gun to your head and blowing your head out, why do men think no, it's okay it's not, not okay. to take their wife to that place? Every single time you have a sexual encounter. It's not okay. Only thing I can tell you, get on your mark, <laughs> get set, and we're going to be off to the races. You better get that boy. Clearly, they have to get paid. Clearly, Tania, clearly, clearly they have to get that need met. But women also desire that. And that's, let me tell you something, guys. Well, okay, let, let, wait, let me get this out for the ladies. Let me tell you something, guys. If you have a wife that is really not wanting to have sex with you, I guarantee you, your focus is on your pleasure most of the time and 90% of the time and probably 10% focused on her and her pleasure. That will stop a woman from really wanting to climb into bed with her husband if all it's going to be about is what you get, when you get it off, how quick you get it off, and it's never about pleasing your wife. The whole sex exchange is about pleasing each other. We should leave the sex bed and I be satisfied and you not, or you satisfied and I'm not. The, the, the whole yeah. really covenant of marriage of it of having that sex peace should be to please each other guys it has to be a two-way street and typically when it's not you get sex shut up i mean that's how it happens well okay if that's the case if this is the case if you're not getting yours every time i blame you yeah because when he was giving it to you the first time and you didn't get it you should have said that that was an issue you needed you should have said that hey yeah i think it comes I down to the communication it comes back down to the communication yeah. that's why i said communication yeah is going to be the key mm -hmm. to all of this that mm -hmm. we're talking about mm -hmm. now what I, I want i like to tell even men men yeah that's why we have to have the open conversation yeah and ladies you have to be more vocal about it and and sometimes you have to be led on how to do these things. So if you need somebody mm -hmm. to touch you a certain way to get you to that point, mm -hmm. this is what you have to do. You gotta you say, say it. Hey, I need you to rub me right here. I mm -hmm. need you to touch me right here. Or I need you to choke me. Or I need you to Wait, pull. Wait, really? Hey, some people like rough sex. I don't know. 
<laughs> but uh, you had to tell your spouse that, hey, this is what I need, you know? Yeah, yeah. I like to call it coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, my God. I am a good coach. One-on-one -on -one coaching? Coaching one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> now, so, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with coaching one-on-one. -on -one. It's nothing wrong, it's nothing with, wrong with it in marriage. You absolutely, I agree, you have absolutely to coach. need to coach. Yes. So, ladies... Because nobody comes to a marriage understanding what it takes to please the other sexually. It's, no. And see, the problem with this whole thing when we have sex outside of marriage is that we have a whole different experience already. So we come to the table with certain things we already love and pleasures and we already this. Want, want. This this is what makes the Bible so true. This is why, see, this is what most churches Tania. don't <laughs> explain to you before getting married. Mm -hmm. It's not that, you know, they don't want you to have sex before you get married. But when you have sex before you get married, mm -hmm. now you expecting your spouse mm -hmm. to make you reach those points that you once reached with somebody when else. You with somebody else. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't had sex and she haven't had sex and y'all get together, mm -hmm. you don't know what's good. Mm -hmm. All you know is this is good. Yeah. And it's it can like be discovering whack. each other. Yep. You know, but when you done been with someone and they, I'm trying to see how to word this, and they giving you everything sexually that yeah, you they desire. Know how to please you they know how to please you beyond what you can beyond think, yeah. measures yeah, yeah. And now you you get with your spouse and now they don't even reach the point mm -hmm. you know that's where the problem lies but and yeah then, so i think it's great like ronald just said a piece we gotta get to man in marriage we gotta be able to communicate about sex and we gotta do coaching one-on-one -on -one, ronald okay Collin. look now <laughs> I, now, now look and, and we're gonna be honest here yeah now what do i mean by coaching one-on-one -on -one? Please listen, women, guys, open up your ears on this. The first one is going to be free. Everything after this is going to be a charge. <laughs> Coaching on one on one. If you are doing something or if you want a sexual act done to you and your significant other start to do that act mm -hmm. and you want that person to move a little bit to the left mm. or move a little bit to the right. All right. you do is just, hey, hey uh, bring it over right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just can't no, 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 no. To the left. Or... <laughs> Or, if you ever seen the police officer who directed in traffic, <laughs> tell your wife, no. I can't with him, guys. I can't with him. Bring it over to the left a little bit. Bring, uh, 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 to the top, to the top, to the top, to the top. Bring it down. Take it off. I mean, all of that stuff, you know, we joking and we That's laughing about one it. On but this is coaching That's one on one. You got you to tell somebody what moves you in that way that you enjoy you. them that and desire. That is the whole point. Yeah. This is the whole point for coaching yeah. because you are actually directing someone on what moves you, what drives you, what makes you uh, reach the yeah. height that you need to be at. Yeah. yeah. But we don't like to talk about this. Yeah. You know, we just go, you know, and, you know, just have it. Yeah. yeah. And... It's okay to praise God in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. So you can't you can't coach no one who doesn't want to learn. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's very hard to coach someone who's not willing to learn. And see, that's the problem, that's, that's the problem. with most people in marriage. And that's that's what we always preach to people in marriage. You should forever be a student of learning your spouse. You mm -hmm. should forever be a student when it comes to your spouse. You should never That's feel good. like you have That's arrived, good. like you have mastered it, like you have gotten the <laughs> ultimate degree and you don't have any more room to learn. You can never get to that place in marriage. No. When you get to that place in marriage, you get to a dangerous place. You should always be willing to learn. You gotta learn. Anybody that does not want to continue to learn what it takes to please their mate wants to allow somebody else to come into their marriage or their relationship. And we just need to have some real conversations because too many women and too many men are getting comfortable not giving their spouse what they need and then you want to feel all uh, offended when somebody has stepped out but you have partly be responsible for what has happened in a marriage because you haven't given them what they needed and and we have to learn how to explore mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. if you ever watch i know some of y'all may not you have can't. kids but if you ever watch Dora the Explorer, every time she come on, she is going somewhere. Uh, she is exploring something. That's right. So in your she marriage, she finding something new. She finding something new. Mm -hmm. So in your marriage, you have to be like Dora the Explorer. Mm. You know, if it means going mm. south to the Caribbean, you have to go down south. If it means going up north to Canada, yeah. yes, take the first flight up to Canada and go. Yeah. If it means going to the bottom, yeah. Even if you can't reach the bottom, yeah. 
Take yeah. that flight there and yeah. try to reach the bottom. Let me just give y'all this scripture real quick. So 1 Corinthians 7, 3, 5 says, The husband must fulfill his marital duty to his wife with goodwill and kindness. This is the amplified version. And likewise, the wife to her husband. The wife does not have exclusive authority. So don't get it twisted. You got authority over your body. You just don't have exclusive authority over her own body. But the husband shares with her. And likewise, the husband does not have exclusive authority over his body. Um, but the wife shares with him, do not deprive each other of marital rights. And so, so many of us don't understand sex is a marital right. We talk about scripture. So many people want to pull out everything else in the Bible, throw it at their spouse. But when it comes to sex, we don't want to, we don't want to obey the things that it talks about in sex. We don't want to have these real discussions about, because why? Would the Bible even take time out to talk about sex if sex is not something that's going to be important in the marital union? So if it's telling us not to deprive each other of sex, it's a real reason behind why you can't deprive somebody from what they need. And so it's to protect us from having those holes in our marriage where somebody else can come enter and be a resource to your spouse. So you got to make sure that you are giving your spouse everything that they need. It says, do not deprive each other, except perhaps by mutual consent. That means together that you all agree, like we talked about earlier, that you agree. We're going to fast for a minute. We're not going to really um, have sex into the play. We're going to fast and pray. We got something we need to really, you know, focus on. That's great. And so that you may devote yourselves unhindered to prayer, but come back together so that Satan will not tempt you to sin because of your lack of self-control. And so everybody want to swear. Everybody want to swear they got self-control. Everybody wants to. If you ask people would they cheat, they're going to, no, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, under no circumstances. That sound good. That's what everybody wants to say. But scripture says, believe. scripture says, do not deprive each other. So that you will not be tempted. Come back together because of your lack of self-control. It doesn't say that you have self-control. It says because of your lack of self-control. So we all lack self-control in that area if we're deprived. That's why it says do not deprive. We all can be tempted. We all can fall short. We all can step out. So if you want to stop from stepping out in your marriage or your relationship, you got to keep the um, sex going. You got to keep the communication about sex going. You got to be able to talk about sex. You got to be able to talk about um, not getting it. You got to be able to talk about what you want. You got to be able to talk about when you feel like cheating. We got to have real conversations. We got to stop having these superficial conversations that people have in marriage that take you nowhere. You got to start being honest about what you're attracted to. Mm -hmm. If you like a little lingerie on your wife, buy some. Yeah. If you need your man to work out a little bit more, Say, babe, let's go work out together. Yeah. Like, talk about it. Like, it's nothing wrong with talking about it. When you don't talk about it, that's when people start keeping secrets. That's when people start having these feelings inside for somebody else, start thinking about somebody else. You know, then you're dreaming about somebody else. Then you're fantasizing about somebody else. Then, oh, you bump into that somebody like that person. And the next thing you know, you're stepping out. Because everything that you truly desire, you haven't even expressed that to your spouse. You haven't even spoken mm. to your spouse about that those things and given them a chance to meet your needs. See, some of us don't even give our give our spouses a chance to yeah, meet our true. needs. That's we don't true. even tell them what our needs are sexually. We don't even tell them what we like. And that's a bad place to put your spouse in. And that's unfair because then they don't even know what it takes to really give you what you need. That's why communication is going to be the key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything we're talking about now, whether it's financially, sexually, spiritually, is going to boil back down mm -hmm. to communication. Yeah. Or, you know... You got to ask yourself, are you communicating what your needs are? Mm -hmm. Because that's where the problem comes in. I, can't, I don't know what you need. I can't read your mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your desires are. And on the way, when I do that, and most men, you know, what we fall short is we don't like to be rejected. Yeah. So exploring different things or different options becomes uh, an issue for us. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to try something, then I get rejected or I, t I get told that it's not good. Mm -hmm. Then my ego is broken. Mm -hmm. No, you have to go through the no's and the no, I don't like this. I like no. 
explore. Yeah. Explore your wife. Yeah. Inside and out. Yeah. Mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. You have to. Mm -hmm. You are the man. Mm -hmm. You set the atmosphere. You set the tone mm -hmm. for everything that goes on in your house. So if you want more sex, guess what you have to do? You have to plant more intimate CC. Yeah. So Candice, you said even when we don't have self-control, that's when the strength of God comes in. Absolutely. God can come in on a lot of times. But let me tell you. Let me we, th see. This is why we got to have real talk. This is why I like this. Is why me and Ronald wanted to have this venue to be able to have real talk about things, because mm -hmm. this is what believers do. We always come back and we put scripture on everything. But all the while, people are cheating on each other that are in the church. People are cheating on each other that are married, that are Christians. People are cheating on each other. Mm -hmm. And we got to get down to why people are cheating on each other. Get to the root of it. You got to get to the root of it. Because at the end of all of that, yeah, it's great. We would like to have self-control. A lot of us believe we have self-control. And even when we lack, God can't step in. But majority of people who are feeling deprived, if we're going to be honest, their first person they're gonna seek is not God you gotta seek God for God to come in and give you that strength you yeah, need yeah, not yeah, to yeah, cheat yeah. most people that are already at the verge and at the door of cheating they're not gonna go to God because God's gonna tell you not to cheat and what they want in that moment is to fulfill that desire they already feel justified like mm -hmm. we talked about to go out and cheat so they're gonna want to go and feel the desire I'm not gonna go look to God to give me some more self-control I'm not gonna do that I'm going to go get my need filled because that's what I want. That's what I've been desiring. That's what I've been lacking for seven months. We got to have real conversation, guys. If you don't want your spouse to cheat, stop depriving them of sex. Now, on Period. The, on, now on the flip side of that, mm -hmm. now you may not be thinking about it, but now this is going to be important why you have a good marital circle. Uh -huh. Or you have good marriage coaches like yeah. us. Yeah. But at the same time, this is the reason when you have uh, a circle of married couples yeah. around you to give you some influence because a lot of times when you have another married couple around you, they should be able to see mm -hmm. things going on or mm -hmm. you should be telling them things that are going on. And mm -hmm. so when you tell your circle what's going on, somebody can incur uh, encourage you to now, nah, man, that may not be the right thing to do mm -hmm. or come on, let's, you know, let me coach you into, you know, how this should work Absolutely. or what you should do Absolutely. about this situation. Because I was just in that situation. So don't really do that. Come on, let's take this right right here. Let's try this yeah. before you go and do that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we talked about some people cheating um, because they just greedy. Some people are just cheaters. And some people yeah, truly some cheat from a lack of. Some people really do. And that's the most time, most of the time when people cheat, it's a lack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether it's a lack of communication, lack of intimacy, yeah. or a lack of uh, sex, yeah. whatever, it's a lack of something. That's yeah. going to be one of the main reasons why a lot of people go out and cheat. Yeah. And a, and, and a lot of times, look, we can't use sex as a weapon and we can't use intimacy as a weapon in our marriage. We just cannot do that. When I, I always like to tell people wep weapons have no loyalty. Like, it's, they're not loyal to you. So if you pull out the weapon, it's not just going to be shot at your spouse. It can turn on you. Weapons have no loyalty. So you got to be prepared that if you using sex as a weapon, that you're going to have some collateral damage. That you, part of, part of what's going to get impacted and hurt is you if you're using sex as a weapon. If you're using intimacy or uh, affection as a weapon in your marriage you better believe it's gonna affect you you're gonna be hurt because withholding affection and intimacy from your wife because you feel like you're not having sex that's not gonna help you guys have sex let's be clear that's not gonna help you guys reach a point where you can connect sexually just like you withholding sex from your husband so that he can give you affection or intimacy is not gonna bring him back around to give you more affection and intimacy yeah. that's not gonna happen what we need to learn to do is conversate we need to learn to uh, converse to my conversate <laughs> converse we need to learn to have a conversation about the issue we need to learn to talk about the issue and talk about it from the heart we got to be able to do those things because that's how you get over those issues that you have sexually but we got to start having some real talk in in the um in, in, in the Christian community because so many of us are stepping out. Do you know how many married men that are believers that hit on me? Like, real talk. Mm -hmm. And I know it happens to my girlfriends. It happens to my sisters. I mean, it happens to a lot of people that I know. And um, and it, even for my husband. Yeah. I mean, ring and toe, fully you married, it still happens. Because at the end of it, people are not looking to leave their spouse. 
They just looking to get their need met. And that's what yeah, we got to understand. That's why you got people out here cheating because they feel like they are deprived at home. And you got to be able to really start talking about what you need in your marriage so you don't, you do not look on the outside of your marriage to get it. You got to start having them conversations. Got to have the real conversations. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is what I wanted to say, Sue. Look. Stop thinking because your husband is saved and loves God that you can wave sex over him as a control tactic and he won't cheat. Now, let's go back to the Bible. If you look at all the great men of the Bible, you know what was the cause of their downfall? Mm. It was stepping out. It was either sex or women. Mm. The woman was the cause. And we're talking about outside women was the cause. And just to show you how... The power of a woman is, even when you look at um, David, for instance, mm -hmm. David had a man killed, slept with his wife, got the lady pregnant, mm -hmm. got the lady pregnant mm -hmm. and had the baby. Mm -hmm. So it's never to a point. And he was a king. Mm -hmm. This was a king who did this, mm -hmm. had a man killed, slept with his wife and got her impregnated. Mm -hmm. So we can't never say that it won't be us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's where the self-control come in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're crazy, Ron. Self-control. Controlling self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Control, And that's why we have to be spiritually fed. Yeah. And have wisdom and understanding absolutely of the word. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. She's just agreeing with what you said. That's, that's absolutely true. And that's the piece of it that... People have to understand that we always teach once we start coaching couples. You got to have a reconnection to God because at the end of it all, to stop a lot of the temptation and to build your strength in order that you can control self, you got to be connected to God. You got to uh -huh. feed the fruits of the spirit. And part of, one of those fruits of the spirit is self-control. And feeding the fruit of the spirit, you got to feed it with God's word because as you feed the fruit of the spirit and what yeah. you feed more takes over and responds quicker. So if you feed your flesh more than you feed your spirit, your responses are typically going to be fleshly. Now, if you feed your spirit more than you feed your flesh, typically you're going to respond more spiritually. You may fall sometimes and, get, and the flesh comes out, but your natural response is going to be spiritual because that's what you feed. Just like your natural response will be fleshly if that's what you feed. So yeah. you got to watch what you feed yourself to be able to mm -hmm. counter when you have these issues in your marriage or when you're not getting sex and when you're not getting intimacy. And so I had a note on here that said research shows that not all cases of adultery arise from sexual greed. Some are prompted by an acute sexual need. Now it doesn't make it excusable, but it also, but it does make it understandable. And that's what we were just talking about. Most people don't go out and cheat because they just want to cheat. Most people go out and cheat because they've been deprived. Like we've actually had couples that haven't had sex months at a time, yeah. even years at a time. That is a problem guys. That is not natural for you to be with somebody joined in holy matrimony and you guys are not having, you know, sex together. Yeah. So that's a dangerous place to be because you're going to have a need that you want to feel just like they're going to have a need that they want to feel. And so it's, it, it, it's a bad, bad place to put your spouse or to be. Mm -hmm. um, I have cheating doesn't make anything better nor will it make men more willing to give the thing that the spouse was like if that is the reason for cheating on me. Absolutely. Like, so we said for, um, like, I totally well, agree, Marcy, that cheating does not help the situation by any means. It does not help the situation by any means. But when you do experience infidelity, one thing that can help um, in that restoration piece is when you understand your part in that. When we understand that we may have had some part in that, not to make someone cheat, but in the part that you have actually been depriving someone from having sex. You have been, been yeah. doing the very thing that the Bible teaches us not to do. We got to begin to take some ownership in that, whether you're a man or a woman, whether the man cheats or the woman cheats. That person who did not cheat, if you had been depriving, and when I say deprived, that means you willingly, intentionally did not give it up, period, wasn't thinking about giving up, never thought about giving it up, and months and a year time went by, you cannot be shocked that somebody went out and cheated on you. No way. And if you, and if you choose to be shocked <laughs> and appalled, that's just unrealistic. I, I don't even know why you would be. 
Because there's no way to expect that somebody's going to continuously go without a need, guys. That's what we're talking about. You got to start thinking about sex and marriage, intimacy and marriage as a need. People need these things, you know, and you got to be the one to give it in the marriage because that's what you're committed to. The yeah, two have true. become one. They, they're not justified in going to get it from somebody else. So they got to come to you. You the resource. And when you choose to shut down the resource because of everyday issues that we all face in marriage, because of you mad, they not giving you this, they not doing that, they not doing this, you having a hard time, you having a bad time. Look, that's not justifiable. Like, it's not justifiable. You got to be able to always reconnect back sexually because it also, when you connect sexually, also reconnects you back intimately. So we got to be able to do that piece. And, and just saying that, man, it, I think it's very hard. Like you said, you would be... Uh, shocked and dismayed if you see someone who can go six months to a year and you shocked that someone has yeah, cheated on you. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be... I'm not saying that it can, can't can be done, mm -hmm. but realistically, man, somebody going six months to a year, mm -hmm. that's going to be crazy with no sex. Yep. No mm -hmm. intimacy. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. So if it's not you, it's going to be someone else. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Yep. Yep. Look, so at the end of it, if you want your spouse to come home faithfully, for those that don't have spouses that are just cheaters, if you really want your spouse, we're talking about people that truly have a relationship with God, that love God, that got into this marriage, committed to the marriage. If you have that type of spouse and you want them to faithfully come home every day, you got to create the type of home they want to come home to. You got to create the type of environment that they want to come be a part of because nobody wants to come be a part of something that they're going to be deprived in. Like, I don't want to come live in a desert. Because in the desert, you're deprived of a lot of things. Like, you're looking for water, it's hot, you know, you're probably hungry if you ain't packed nothing. Nobody wants to go into that type of environment in a marriage. So you got to be yeah. willing and ready to create the environment that's going to feed your spouse what they need, and that's love and intimacy. You got to be able to do the two. Got to. Let me give you guys something, because I thought this was so hot when I read it, because I know most guys. Let me tell yep. you guys. Let me, let me switch gears real quick. Hold on. I'm going to switch gears real quick for before the ladies. She, before she switch gears, <laughs> can we do a time check? What's the I don't have, I, I mean, it's uh, 9.36. It's 9.36. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get ready and wrap. Well, we fasting. You're not fasting, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I just want to make sure. I can't with you. I we're can't We're going to make you. it publicly that you're not fasting. You throw, you throw me off my stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me find my notes. Okay, so guys, <laughs> he's talking about back again to the sacrificial. Exactly, exactly, That's it, man. So guys, let me let, let let me just tell you what what we want, what women want, what women need, what women enjoy, what women love to receive from their husbands. We love affection. We love intimacy. It fuels us, feeds us, empowers us. It makes us want to do any and everything to please you. We love intimacy and affection. And let me show you why women desire intimacy and affection. And let me show you why we know you guys are capable of doing it because it's in the Bible. So Song of Solomon, guys, if you haven't read Song of Solomon, I want you to go to chapter four and read the whole chapter four. If you have not Husbands read Song of Solomon in the Bible, chapter 4. I want you to go read it. But let me just read you what the man said about his Give bride. Me let me just read you um, Song of Solomon, chapter 4. The whole chapter 4. I ain't no verses, just the whole chapter 4 I want you to hear. Let me, let me just give you what the man was saying, the sweet everythings that he was whispering to his wife. Let me just tell you. He said, how fair and beautiful you are, my darling. How very beautiful. Very beautiful. Your eyes behind your veil are like those of a dove. He talked about her hair. He talked about her teeth. He said, your lips are like a ribbon of scarlet and your mouth is lovely. This man told this woman her mouth was lovely. You hear me? But at that point, what have she have done with her? This man told her her <laughs> mouth was lovely, guys. <laughs> Your neck is like the Tower of David. I don't I don't even know how that's sexy, but it sounds sexy. You know, I don't even know how that's hot. But to him, it was hot. Her neck was hot. Like, so, he says, your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle, which feed among the lilies. 
I mean, he was just going on and on and on about how hot she was. He said, you have raised my heart and given me courage with a single glance of your eyes. So pretty much her eyes just set him off. He was just, he was just all done when he looked in her eyes. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my promised bride. How much better is your love than wine and the fragrance of your oils and spices. Your lips, my bride, drip honey. Wait a minute. Wait. This chick lips drip honey. Y'all don't hear me, though. Y'all don't hear me. I'm trying to tell you guys, this man had major game. Major game. You think that he didn't get any? And let me tell you, if you read... <coughs> All of the songs of Solomon, you will hear the reply of his wife. And pretty much his wife said, we're going to go to the vineyard. I'm going to sum it up for y'all. We're going to go to the vineyard. We're going to see if the fruits came in. We're going to spend some time together. And pretty much we're going to go there and make love. That's what her response to all of that right there was. All of that affection, all of that intimacy that he threw her way, that was her response in the Bible. Guys, everything you need, ladies, everything you need to have a successful marriage is in the word of God. You just got to read it. You just got to study. It. You just got to know it. You know, you got to take that wisdom and apply it. This man mm -hmm. pretty much spoke about every piece of his wife from her hair to her eyes, to her lips, to her neck, to her breast, to all of her, to the very thought of her drove him crazy. Like that's how you should be about your wife. If you're not about your wife like that, dude, your game, you, you, you really, you, you really slacking. Like you really slacking. Yes. Your wife should move you in that way. When you see her, you should be able to speak something sweet about her. You should be able to say something because let me tell you what happens with women. We Jealous. respond. We respond from verbal initiation. Y'all men, y'all respond for physical touch. It takes the physicality. All it takes is the touching and you guys ready to go. We like to hear. The we like mental to hear. Stimulation. Yeah. We need that mental piece to happen. Like, we want to feel like we the only ever girl you ever thought about, the prettiest thing that you ever seen, all you ever think about. That's what your wife wants to feel. And unfortunately, she wants to feel it all the time. And you can deliver it all the time. It doesn't yeah. take a lot. It doesn't take a lot at all, guys. You, 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 you can buy cards. You can leave notes in the house. <clears throat> I tell people... <laughs> all the time me and Ronald had a conversation recently I was like babe you need to keep your intimacy game up I need a little more affection he was like alright babe I got you don't even worry about it some time went by I woke up one morning got in my truck and it was like a little love note on my steering wheel I was like ah! <laughs> I'm winning today so I got in the truck and I was like that's really cute that's really hot Call. I called him at work I was like babe I appreciate the love note that really made my day start off great he was like oh babe no problem you good great so I packed my lunch that day guys and I went to work Went into the office. It was lunchtime. I opened my lunch bag. And it was like three love notes. Three lo on little post-it notes in my lunch bag. And I was like, get out of town. This man done showed up. I got four love notes today. He done showed out. You know, so I was really like tripping. So then midway through the day, I had to go in my work bag and look for something. So I went in my work bag to look for something. And another little note fell out. Guys, it was the most awesome thing. It didn't cost a thing. Nope. It didn't take that much time. All I wanted to see was his thoughts, you know, and all that mm -hmm. drew me and made me excited was his thoughts on paper about me. So already I was coming home on 10,000, like waiting to see my husband, like on 10,000. That's the power that a man has. That's what it talks about. Even when you talk about husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. It says that you're supposed to give her that. In return, men, when you do that, in return, God would then open up the windows of heaven <laughs> and, and pour allow, you out a blessing. And pour you out a blessing. That you don't even have room to receive. Fill me up. <laughs> that's, but that's the truth. But because, that is the truth. Though. Because that's what people have to learn to do. I think a but lot what of... Happened, what, what happened, I don't mean to cut you off, but what happens when you do all of that? I think somebody just posted a question. Now, what happens when you give the love story of Solomon, chapter 4, from the top verse to the bottom <laughs> verse, and you come up empty. What happens? You keep trying. See, this is the problem. You keep trying because truly, if you are being intimate with your wife because you choose, you you are your desire is to please her, you don't have an expectation. It's not about having an expectation. What is it about? Because that's what it's, you're doing. If, if, no. if I do something for you and I come up short, 
come up short because my whole now, thing was to do it for you. Someone can come up short once. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't have a number. It doesn't have a number. So it don't have a number. No, it doesn't have a number. You got to keep going. So the song are... is true. It takes a fool to learn that <laughs> love, don't love, don't love nobody. <laughs> That. And see that, and I'm most of the time, men don't want to keep coming up short. So I just, great, Marcia said she's heard that men say that they are not romantic or it's not in their nature. Uh, that is a complete that's a lie. lie. That's a lie. That is a that's complete lie. lie. And and the thing about it is, you may meet a guy that's not typically romantic, but any man can be taught to be romantic. That's that's simply a teaching. Any man can be taught to be intimate. Any man can be taught to be shown how to be affectionate. See, but that goes back to what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. You have to take the time to know. Mm -hmm. To take the time out to know your spouse. Mm -hmm. Take the time out to understand your spouse. Because mm -hmm. when you take the time out to understand her, you know what moves her. Yeah. You understand how her minds work. You understand how chemically unbalanced she can get sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when she get that way, mm -hmm. you know exactly what to do. Yeah. You know, sometimes when women get chemically unbalanced, sometimes they just need you to rub their back. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be touched in a sexual way. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be, you know, kissed on. They just mm -hmm. need you for you to rub their back. Yeah. That'll simply calm the storm. Yeah. And so, so I wanted to let you see this. So LaRon said, um... Sometimes it feels pointless when they when it doesn't feel received. So when you do all of I that, I do agree with that. It and, feels pointless, and I, and I do agree with that. And women, you have to understand this: when your husband goes out of his way to do something for you, even if it's not really what you wanted, show some appreciation. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when you don't show that appreciation, that mm -hmm. make us feel like, man, I ain't gonna do it no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we love praise. He's, you know, and 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 the Bible says this: Hey. We are made in the image and the likeness of Christ. Yeah. So just as Christ loved to be praised yeah. and we born in his image, yeah. we also like to be praised for what we do. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Tania said, where can he take classes? Because I'm too busy for a teaching career. <laughs> be too busy for a teaching career if no, you want the student to master the lesson you got to be willing to teach you got to be willing to teach yeah. you got to be willing to break it down yeah and you know you don't have to and i understand i mean i take that back 50 50 i'm 50 i'm 50 percent with you and i'm 50 mm -hmm. percent 50 percent on the other side okay and the reason why i say i'm with you because for me i am t i was born an explorer mm. so exploring is what i do mm -hmm. but for those men who don't explore i think women don't like to be the one who teach you say, hey, I need you to grab me right here. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. They just mm -hmm. want you to do it. Mm -hmm. So if they got to tell you to do it, it's not the same as you doing you it by doing yourself. It. Like So so guys, point. I'm going to make this point for the ladies. Oh, I'll tell you what. Just, okay, guys, if you're on this scope, like I said, I'm starting a group called The Men Village. Mm -hmm. The Men Village is going to be coaching one-on-one, -on -one, teaching men, showing men what to do, how to do it, and where to do it at. And now, if this won't work for everybody, it's just a general, is it going to be a general class to show you that you have to be uh, a go-getter. You have to be an explorer when it comes to your wife. Yes, yeah, and women, we don't mind telling you what we need intimately. We don't mind telling you, um, you know, what we need you to do and what we want you to do. What seems a little fake is when we tell you what we want and what we need and you do it like, in like two seconds. Like, we don't really want it like in two seconds. We really want like you to do it like it didn't seem like we told you to do it. Like, so if I say, babe, you know what? I would love if you just planned a romantic night for us. Like you picked out my outfit, you bought my shoes, you told me, okay, just get dressed at this time. I'm coming to pick you up. You got to be ready to go. I don't necessarily want you to do that tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? I want you to take it in, put some thought behind it. It may be two weeks. It may be a month down the line and it happens and it will blow our mind. So we want you to take the ideas that we give you, but we don't want to seem like it's forced. Like we want to yeah, feel like I, I, you I had the, you had the desire and just the aha moment. Like, let me do this for my babe. I know she likes this. Let me make this happen on this day. We don't want to feel like we forced you just like you guys don't want to feel like you're begging for sex. We don't want to feel like we're begging for intimacy. We don't want to feel like we're begging for flowers, begging for a date, begging 
for um you to plan something romantic, begging for you to learn how to say some sweet nothings. Matter of fact, let me just give y'all a lesson. It's a lot of literature out there that will teach you what to say to yeah, a woman. True. It's that's a true. lot of literature out there that will teach you the right things to say to a woman. Now, all you got to do is repeat what you read. So it's no reason a man should not be able to meet his wife's um need for affection or her need for intimacy. You got to be able to talk to her and find out what she like. But I think, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier, <laughs> men just get lazy, man. Yes. So men, if you're out there and you're listening to uh, 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 women, if you if your husband is near the phone yes, or near the right. computer, just turn it up a little bit and let them hear this. Man, we have to stop being lazy. Stop being lazy. To exploring with our wives. And mm -hmm. I think uh, Ron uh, posted something and said, now what if your wife mm -hmm. uh, don't want to explore? Mm -hmm. So what, when you, I mean, I'm going to give you some tips on this. When your wife don't want to explore, mm -hmm. what you then have to do is you have to, like, with, um, with animals, with animals, um, typically when you have a zoo animal and you put them in the wild, they don't know how to explore because where they come from, it come from like a box in one. They just used to roam around. They used to somebody feeding them. They used to somebody sheltering them. And it goes back to you directing them. Mm -hmm as the man. Mm -hmm. Because I said in the book, men have the power and the authority to change the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have someone who don't like to explore, you simply may have to grab their hand and take them to the wild. Mm. So you have to start doing wild things to them. Mm. And you start blowing their mind. Mm -hmm. In return, hopefully, <laughs> they will literally blow your mind. <laughs> so I knew you blow their mind. I know you had and to in get return, it in in some kind of way. They will blow <laughs> your mind. Because that, I think that's typically what men really want. Uh -huh. And I think women want this as well, but we have to learn how to get to that point. And it's hard for when someone has to, has to tell you how to explore. So men, Google. Go to Google. See what turn. You can just Google. Yeah. How do you turn a woman on? What, and it'll give you 10 things to turn a woman on. Start trying some of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh... Uh, so he said women do all five freaky stuff to get you then get married and turn into the no girl all of a sudden absolutely we need to talk about that too because for those that do have sex before marriage that is typically what happened you have so many that do all this stuff to get a husband and then you get the husband and it's like mm, I'm not doing that I'm not doing that no I'm not doing that I don't feel like that no I don't want to do that but don't you did all those Things. Like, all, all the those nasty, things. grimy, slimy things. things. And now... And let me tell you what, you know, me and my husband conversate just about everything all the time. One thing he makes very clear and very real when he said he talks to guys is that a lot of times what, uh, how side chicks survive is that they have no boundaries on the exploration. Let's be clear. No. And that's that's why so many men are willing to take the chance of being caught or something happening because they want to be able to explore. And side chicks don't have no boundaries on exploring because, see, they're doing what the same thing that the woman did before she got married to him that was having sex, that's giving true. him everything he needed to get him. Because that's what the side chick is trying to do. Pretty much trying to take you from your marriage so she's gonna give you whatever she want to give you because she wants you to go so as a wife you got to understand that if you're married to this man and if you were intimate with him prior to and got him accustomed to you and got him desiring the things that you were giving him now you are in the covenant that has has now allowed you to be able to do that because before we weren't supposed to be doing that so now you in the covenant that allows him. you to do it and you want to abstain from doing it that makes absolutely no sense it makes no sense at all and so you got to be willing and able to explore with your spouse now the thing is if your spouse isn't ready for something you gonna have to be patient and get them to the point where they might be ready for it or they may never be ready for it but you got to let people work in their in their zones and you got to be willing to grow together as a couple okay let's get to this question i thought there was a real good question i got y'all got me over here dehydrated i ain't what, never been dehydrated on mbg what if you still a freak and the man is still out there exploring now i i'm, I'm just gonna chime that, in you can jump on this do you want to jump in i'm just i got one point that's greed it, it's two ways, and I'm going to say this. It, it could be greed, and on the flip side of that, mm -hmm. if you are doing everything 
that you're supposed to be doing in the bedroom and your husband is still exploring. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, let me tell you this, I'm not saying that this is you, but a lot of times what women do is you're doing a lot of the wrong things mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. the right things. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. You know, because you could think, you know, yeah, you're freaking and you're giving it to him. Mm -hmm. But are you doing the right things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or are you getting dirty and grimy mm -hmm. and slimy and all slimy. that kind of stuff? <laughs> yeah, because you have to get grimy. Yeah, But then you have those people now, that I, are greedy. That we talked about earlier. Now I do understand you that. have people that get in a marriage with no expectation of being faithful that are just naturally cheaters and they're going to always be cheaters and they're going to always want to cheat. But one thing that I can say mostly about situations like that, typically there's a sign of infidelity prior to the marriage. And, and when you have those situations where somebody has been unfaithful before you said I do, then you got to expect that some of that cheating behavior might not be gone. And so those are the types of people typically that do just what you said, that they're going to continue to cheat even when you're doing what they're asking you to do. Because if I'm doing what you're asking me to do, dude, you're greedy. Like, you're greedy. Like, at the end of the day, if I'm willing to explore and meet your needs and do what you're asking me to do, then it's not about your need being met. It's about you wanting the whole world. That, that's really what it's about. It's about you wanting variety, wanting to do what you want to do, and not wanting wanting to be in this covenant of marriage. Yeah. And so you you got to understand that when you got, it's a difference. Like we always tell people, you can recover from infidelity in a marriage, but it is a difference from moving forward with somebody who truly, who truly, who truly is um, regretful of stepping out of their marriage. Yeah, Somebody who truly does not want to go that route again. And when you have dynamics that may have even created that environment that he or she stepped out, you can reconcile situations like that. But it's very hard and almost quite foolish to reconcile a situation where you have a um, continuous, ongoing, uh, unfaithful spouse and you're going to continue to reconcile and continue to come back to the table that, and you don't see that person changing because the only part you can't change them. The only That's person true. that can change that person is God. They're going to have to have a spiritual connection with God to get them in line to understand first what marriage is about to get down to the root of why they feel like they got to continue to have all these different women or men to meet, to, to feel satisfied. They're going to have to do that piece. And so sometimes we stay in marriages where we know the person has no intention of being faithful to us. And then we want to continue to go through the hurt. Oh, I found out last week he was cheating with her. Okay, six months go by. Oh, I found out he was cheating again. You just want to stay with somebody who cheated? Like at some point, you got to make the decision of I deserve better than this because that is an out in marriage. That is an out. That is an out. And so that's a great justification for why you can move on with your life. And, and keep it moving. Right. You don't have to continue to get played. There are people that are greedy, but there also are people in marriages that are starving, guys. There are people that are married and are starving because people, because their spouse is not giving them what they need. There are people in marriages yeah. that are starving from intimacy and affection because their spouse is not giving them what they need. And I say intimacy and, intimacy and affection is typically for women because that don't really move men. Like, uh -huh. you don't go and get no man no old flowers and be like, oh, babe, look, I brought you some flowers. He going to be like, what? Uh, some what? But if you come home, you like, babe, I got some fire. And you give him what he likes. Like, that's that, all you have to do. It's going to move him. Now, watch this. On Christmas, oh my God. a man don't need a gift. <laughs> give him some. <laughs> On his birthday. This man, he don't need anything. Give mm -hmm. him some. Mm -hmm. Halloween. Mm -hmm. He don't need candy. Give him some. Valentine's. Yeah. I promise you, he don't need anything. Yeah. Give him some. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. Now, I want I want to hit the men with this right here. Check this <coughs> out. Men, you have to... I'm going back to the intimacy with men and exploring again with men because it's going to be very critical for you to keep the attention of your wife. Naturally, we as men, uh, we are hunters. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the lion, I want to go because I was looking at... Um, this show the other night about lions. Mm -hmm. When a lion sees his prey, he is very patient. Mm -hmm. He watches the prey for a second. He just don't jump on it, boom, and hit it and get it. No. Mm -hmm. He sneaks up. He looks at it. He get close enough to it. Mm -hmm. He creeps up on this side right here. Mm -hmm. He creeps up on that side right there. Mm -hmm. He wait for the right opportune time to go for it. Mm -hmm. 
that's how it has to be in, in your marriage with the mm-hmm. intimacy part. You have to be patient. Mm-hmm. Because when you were given that chase before you guys got married, yep. you was patient. Mm-hmm. But now that you're married, you can't expect for your wife just to jump in the bed and boom, you just get it. No, mm-hmm. you have to be patient mm-hmm. and work on that mm-hmm. patient part. Because it is going to be, patience is going to be the key to this whole success being successful in your marriage yeah and just like <clears throat> so I, I think i saw like side there are side dudes out there so there are side dudes out there when i when i speak i'm speaking from both sides i'm not speaking just for um men cheating or just for women cheating it happens On across the yeah. board like the whole piece of deprivation happens across the board so anybody can feel deprived and feel like they're pushed to go out or step outside their marriage we got to understand that man we Everybody comes to marriage with a need. That was really the part of us jumping on here tonight and talking about this. It's not okay to deprive your spouse of sex, period. Whether you're a man or a female, it is not okay to deprive your spouse. The Bible talks about always um, giving unto each other sex. That's the marital duty. It speaks of it being a marital duty and only abstaining from it when you guys are in agreement in fasting and in prayer. Yeah. And in that time, don't stress that time out for forever because you will easily be tempted because we have no self-control. That's what the word says. So you got to understand that that's a natural need. The need is not going to go away because you don't want to meet the need because you choose to not be a resource anymore is not going to stop that man or that woman from needing sex. Understand that. And so you're going to take your marriage now down a dark alley where anything can happen and somebody can rob you. And next thing you know, you like, oh my God, they robbed me. They came into my marriage and took my husband. He doing this, he doing that. Yeah, you got robbed because you took your marriage to a place that it wasn't supposed to be. Like, so we got to be diligent. As believers, so many times as believers and as Christians, we get into marriages and we want to be very passive Mm -hmm. about marriage. We want to be like, okay, well, we married, so he just shouldn't cheat whether he get what he want or whether she get what she want. She shouldn't cheat. That's great. That's great. That sounds good, but that's not real. That sounds good, but that's not real. Because so many people out here are cheating because they're not getting what they need. So stop believing people that are preaching to you that whether or not your spouse is getting what they need, that they they just completely all out run. They should not be cheating on you. They should not. But it can happen, guys. And yeah, you're inviting true. it to happen. And you're creating the environment where it can happen. Yeah. That That's just it. That's just it. And you got to know the difference from somebody who steps out because of deprivation and somebody who's just greedy. Because a lot of us wasting marriages, too, with greedy people who don't have no, no thought of being committed. And so you got to make sure that you're giving what you need. Men typically need sex. Women, we need sex in our marriage too. Sex is supposed to be pleasurable. We're supposed to enjoy that exchange in marriage. We're supposed to have that exchange in marriage as often as we can. So many of us get caught up in the cares of the world like the Bible talks about. You can't let the cares of the world keep you from each other. The fact that you work, what, 60 hours this week? That's your problem. You work 60 hours this week. Yeah. That woman didn't work 60 hours this week. You need to give her what she needs. The fact that he, that you work 60 <laughs> hours this week as a woman, that don't excuse your responsibility to your husband to be intimate with him, to be sexual with him. That doesn't excuse that piece. So we all got to understand, just because you chose to have seven kids and now you got to be responsible for seven kids and you tired at the end of the day, that don't excuse your responsibility. That We got to get down to us. And get down to connecting together as husband and wife. Because we always teach people, man, at the core of a society is community. At the core of community is family. At the core of family is husband and wife. If you can't sustain husband and wife, you're going to continuously have a breakdown of the family and continue to have a breakdown of everything that we're seeing now. That's why we have so many issues um, now. That's why people can't have relationships now because they haven't seen it done with their parents. They don't know what it is to sacrifice in a marriage. They don't know what it is to have fun in a marriage. They don't know what it is to desire your spouse. They never even seen their parents kiss. Never even seen them hug each other, touch on each other. Like, it's important that we show our children how to have a healthy marriage and a healthy relationship. And it's also important to understand how to connect with each other. I see you, Tania. You're so extra. What's the last question? So should we leave because they cheated when we sold fleshly when we married? Um, No. I don't think, like I said 
said before, I don't think that just because somebody cheats that somebody has to leave the marriage. I don't think that. I think you have to look at the totality of what's going on in the marriage to see if it can be reconciled. Because first you got to have the desire for the people to reconcile. You got to have that desire and you got to be willing to do the work. And so I think that they, I don't think that you should. I think that that's something that you have to resolve first in yourself. You have to seek God for guidance. I think you have to talk it out with your spouse about what you're going to need to move forward. Um, what they're going to need to do to help you move for I think it takes a lot of things to be able to decide whether or not you should or should not leave but I think when you're dealing with somebody who is continuously stepping out of a marriage when you're trying to do what you need to do to please them then I think I, I, I just think you're wasting your time and you got to be real about that you're exposing yourself to everything else that they're bringing into you. Because with that, they're bringing a spiritual connection. They're bringing from all these other people they laying down with. With it, they're bringing the chance of any diseases that they're exposing to you. With it, they're bringing um, the emotions of somebody else that may be getting attached to them. And next thing you know, you got a woman at your door arguing with you about your husband. Like, you got to look at all of those things. And when you're dealing with somebody like that, they're not at a place of reconciliation. They just want to yeah. do what they want to do. And so, and I'm not saying to being a fool. Yeah, but you no. know, a lot of times, man, we know when the Spirit of God tells us, okay, this is not, this not you. Yeah. This is not it. Yeah. And you also know when he tell you, hey... Stay in there. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. But we don't like to listen to the voice of the God yeah. most of the time. You're like, we just want to do what we want to do and do what feels good to us. Yeah. She said, did Jesus waste his time with us? No, no, no. Jesus did not waste his time with us. No. And, and, and we truly believe that God can come in and change any situation. <clears throat> any. That's a choice that each individual has to make for themselves. But see, one thing about it is there are times. See, this is the importance of having a relationship with God. Because sometimes God has already released you from the marriage, but we want to change the person. And we're not standing waiting for God to change the person. We're standing waiting to change the person to get the credit. And that's where the problem lies. And that's why the change doesn't happen if we're going to be real about it. There's nothing wrong with standing for your marriage when there's a, a situation of infidelity. But it's absolutely insane to stand for your marriage for somebody who isn't even seeking God, isn't even connected to God, doesn't even believe in God, isn't even trying to incorporate to. his connect. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's a waste. <coughs> so <coughs> I do think that you have to really look at that. <coughs> uh, God also releases you. When your spouse cheats, Candace, he does release us in death, but God releases you when your spouse cheats. If there is infidelity, you can leave your marriage. That's very no, clear in the true. Bible. It's just not that you have to stand until they die. You can't divorce your spouse for all these superficial reasons that people have been divorcing their spouses about, but there's very clear guidelines to what is divorceable in the, in the Bible. And... <clears throat> And at the point that it's a divorceable issue and something like infidelity, you got to really start to wonder about yourself and what's right for you. And that's why you got to have a relationship and seek God. That's why you got to be talking to God. You got to be having that relationship mm -hmm, with God. Mm -hmm. So we ain't going to keep you guys long. We just wanted to talk about that. We already went over <clears throat> and beyond our time. So we hope that this has helped you guys share it with somebody that and you we know. And we also will be doing a part two because yeah. it seems like we got a lot of feedback on this. Yeah. And so definitely join us uh, Monday night at yeah. 8 o'clock. For the regular time. For the MBG. regular time. We just jumped in because, you know, I was starting up yeah. this, this this man village thing mm -hmm. and that came up. And mm -hmm. so we had to go ahead. We said, man, I said, man. Because <laughs> you at work just chilling, Laron. <laughs> We're not staying up to you till 4 o'clock in the morning, man. <laughs> exactly. And so please make sure you guys, you know, join us every Monday at 8 o'clock. We'll be on our regular time. And ladies, I got a message for you guys. All the ladies, please put your earplugs in. I want you guys to hear Thanks, this message. Mm -hmm. Please, if you're a lady and if you've already been to work, hopefully you got some rest when you got home. Make sure tonight know going. you give your husband a blessing. <laughs> Make sure tonight, if you're in retail and maybe you have worked 10 or 12 hours, 
please give your husband a blessing. <laughs> Because, you know, he deserved that. Yeah. He yeah, deserved yeah. it. But we appreciate you guys we tuning do in. And if you guys got some questions that you guys want to shoot us to Go MBG ahead. that you want to spark in the next conversation about sex and intimacy, feel free to send those to us. And we will drop those questions um, in as we're talking about it on Monday. As we continue this conversation, we'll pull up some of these questions and just have a conversation about them on MBG on Monday, too. Because this is such an important issue in our marriages um today we got to make sure that we are connected and that we're giving each other what we need it's important it's very important it's very important so we love you guys man we pray that god blesses you for the rest of the week and keeps you until we see you guys again those that are in atlanta man we are excited about conference. our conference coming in august and so if you didn't come to the conference last year you need to be in the conference the conference is not just for married couples it's for couples dating it's for engaged couples it's for people that want to understand marriage before they get into marriage feel free to come to the conference and so we're going to put up the conference information very soon on our page and we'll be talking about those on our scope and sharing um everything for you guys so laron yes that would be great if you make that happen for, on a dvd for us put you to work <laughs> <laughs> so um guys we love you guys y'all stay <clears throat> in prayer we ask that god keeps you guys and look at the end of it it's one flesh guys it's one flesh. It says the two shall become one flesh. The yeah. one flesh is not just about you guys merging all the other things like merging spiritually, merging each other together. One flesh is sex. One flesh does mean sex. It does mean the connection of sex. That's why also in the Bible, it says if a man goes to sleep with a harlot, that, um, remind me of what it said, that a man goes to sleep with a harlot, they become one flesh. And so one flesh in sex. And one flesh does mean the sexual connection. And so you want to always ensure that you're becoming one flesh with your spouse. If you've got an issue, talk it out, guys. Communication is key. Communication can get, get you through anything in your marriage. And it definitely, definitely can have you handle any sexual issues in your marriage. It can ha help you handle any uh, affection issues, intimacy issues in your marriage. Guys, your wife needs intimacy. She needs affection. Buy her some flowers. Take her on a date that she didn't have to plan. You know, <clears throat> say some sweet nothings in her ear. Write her a love letter. Send her some cute stuff. You know, surprise her. Just spend time with her. Watch one of the little girly flicks that she likes to watch that's all about romance that's very unrealistic, but just watch it anyway. <laughs> you know, and talk to her about it. Spend some time with her. Hold her hand. Hug her. Give her a kiss when she comes home. Hold her in the bed without any expectation. Women love those things. And ladies and guys, Give each other and success. before we before we close out, I know that women love the intimacy, the kiss thing. So I want to go ahead and get my night started. Really? Oh yeah. my God! Thanks. And baby. so we have to go, <laughs> and we won't be fasting tonight. You about to make and me so, choke on my water? Don't choke on the water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ron, continue to work on that communication. It's key, man. If y'all can talk about it, you can get through it. I guarantee you. You got to be able to talk about it, though. You got to be able to talk about it. When you can talk about it, you can get through anything. So we love you guys. I know he'll be looking at me sideways because I, I st I'm still talking. Right, exactly. <laughs> Hey, man, but everybody go tonight, get that sacrificial <laughs> offering. Uh, I know my sister, Shannon, she out there, man. I know she tired right now, but it's called a sacrificial <laughs> offering. Even when you're tired, you know, sacrifice. 30 seconds, one minute, minute and a half, two minutes. Two seconds. Two seconds is all he needs. And so, yeah, we're going to be praying for you guys, man. We thank you guys for tuning in and joining yes, us, yes. man. We are so excited, man, about what God. We have been extremely busy, man. That's why we didn't jump on Monday. Yeah. And so we had a little time tonight to kind of get in. But, man, we thank you guys for just uh, supporting us in everything that we do.